Finals SAQ41, Anesthesia for MRI. You are asked to transfer an intubated intensive care patient for MRI scan. A. What is meant by the terms MR safe and MR conditional in relation to equipment used in the MRI scanner room? MR safe. These equipments pose no MR related hazards to patients or staff when used according to instructions and can therefore be used in any MR setting. MR conditional. These equipments pose no MR related hazard in a specified MR environment under specific conditions of use such as static field strength and rate of change of magnetic field. MR conditional equipments are safe for use under conditions specified by the manufacturer. B. What precautions can be taken to prevent burns caused by monitoring equipment used in an MRI scanner? Use only MR safe or MR conditional monitoring equipment that has been deemed appropriate to use in that scanner. Check all equipment prior to use that all is intact and there is no breach in any insulating surfaces that might risk metal touching skin. Remove or limit conductive materials such as metal including fiber optic cables for ECG and pulse oximeter. This eliminates use of electrical current which may result in induction currents and burn the underlying skin. Telemetric monitor eliminates risk of induction currents in connecting leads. To minimize risk of induction currents, ECG leads should be of high impedance, braided and short. ECG electrodes must be MR safe. Do not allow any cables to coil or cross each other as induction of current can result from capacitance coupling. Ensure leads are positioned to exit the scanner down the center rather than at the side of the patient, close to the radio frequency coils. Separate leads from patient's skin, for example with foam insulating padding. Pacemaker wires may also heat. Ensure that they are MRI safe. C. List other precautions you would take to minimize the risk associated with MRI. Equipment check. Ensure all equipment to be used are MR safe or MR conditional and is safe to be used in that scanner. Checklist. All staff and patients should complete checklists ensuring no contraindications to entering MRI scanner. Ferromagnetic objects. Small ferromagnetic materials within the 3MT field can become projectiles which may injure or kill. Large objects can crush or trap. All ferromagnetic objects should be removed and be placed away from the MR scanner. Ensure all equipment is non-ferromagnetic such as trolleys and oxygen cylinders. Electric motors in syringe pumps may run erratically and magnetic media such as credit cards and mobile phones will be erased. Ensure these ferromagnetic objects do not enter the MRI. Foreign bodies such as heart valves, aneurysm clips, steel splinters in the eye. Implanted devices such as cardiac pacemakers or neurological stimulators which may be inactivated or reprogrammed. Drug delivery patches may contain metal and may cause burns. Some clothes contain metal fibers and should not be worn. Do not place MRI conditional kit on the moving table as it might move beyond the 5MT line. Beyond the 0.5MT boundary is considered safe. Patients and staff with cardiac pacemakers must remain outside the 0.5MT boundary. Padding over RF coils. Ensure padding is intact to prevent direct contact between the patient and the coils. Ear protection. Should be provided for all patients Anesthetize or not as high noise levels in the scanner may damage hearing. Use MRI safe earplugs or defenders. Monitoring equipment and breathing circuit. Check that there is sufficient length by checking planned range of movement of MRI stretcher before leaving the scanner room. Inaccessibility of airway. There is difficulty to access the airway once the patient is in the scanner. Meticulous securing of airway should be performed to ensure it does not dislodge. Monitoring. Telemetric monitoring to facilitate the presence of monitoring screen in the control room. This reduces the risk of failing to notice abnormalities. Remote site anesthesia. Ensure senior support is available. Ensure orientation with equipment, location, and emergency kit prior to commencement of anesthesia. Some equipment will be unfamiliar as it is MR safe and therefore different to that used elsewhere. 
ensure identical monitoring standards to those used elsewhere can be achieved. Awareness of low light levels is often used in radiology. Risk of gadolinium-based contrast agents. These agents are used in up to 30% of scans. Avoid if EGFR is less than 30 mL per minute due to risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. Newer agents are associated with lower risk of nephrogenic sclerosing fibrosis. Do not repeat contrast within 7 days. Avoid in pregnancy unless absolutely necessary. Anaphylaxis are rare. Drugs to manage anaphylaxis should be readily available. Side effects include headache, nausea, dizziness, local burning and wheels. Helium escape. In the event of an emergency magnetic field shutdown, liquid helium coolant rapidly expands into a gas. This should vent outside the building, but some may enter the MRI suite causing a hypoxic environment requiring urgent evacuation. D. What are the contraindications to an MRI scan? Contraindications include recent surgery involving ferromagnetic clips or implants, ferromagnetic material in the eye, ferromagnetic cochlear implants and neurosurgical clips, intraaortic balloon pumps and ventricular assist devices, ferromagnetic cardiac occluder devices within 6 weeks of implantation, neurostimulators, programmable shunts or drug pumps, pacemaker or ICD, some newer devices are MRI compatible, some aortic stand grafts are ferromagnetic. Additional information Examiner's report. Despite the fact that many candidates will have accompanied patients to the MRI scanner, knowledge of the specific precautions needed to prevent harm during such a procedure was poor. Points were lost by concentrating on the difficulties of anesthesia in a remote location, while important were not what was asked for. Conduct of anesthesia in MRI room. Set up. Two alternative approaches are feasible. Specialized MRI conditional equipment within the scan room or conventional equipment outside the magnetic field in a control room. Departments should standardize one approach depending on space, funds and frequency of use. Each approach has its pros and cons. Typical setup. Induction and recovery area adjacent to but outside the scan room. Equipped with conventional anesthetic machine and monitoring. Non-magnetic tipping trolley for patient transfer into the scanner. Pipe gases, scavenging and suction in induction and scan areas. Either a compact anesthetic machine and ventilator in the control room with a 10 meter coaxial vein breathing system and a gas agent side stream analyzer with capnograph display fitted with an extended sampling tube. The response time is increased by 5 to 10 seconds with this setup. Or MRI conditional anesthetic machine in the scan room with a circle circuit. MRI conditional monitoring devices includes fiber optic pulse oximeter probe with shielded cable, ECG with carbon fiber leads and electrodes, and NIBB pumps with an extended hose and non-metallic connectors. Multiple manufacturers produce MRI conditional monitor units within the scan room and a slave unit in the control room. Regarding patients requiring a secured airway, patient access is restricted physically and magnetically Ensure airway and vascular access are well secured. Intubate and ventilate babies and small children less than 10 kilos, patients with raised ICP or patients needing a protected airway should be intubated and ventilated. A ray tube keeps the breathing circuit clear of the coil in patients having head scans. Spontaneous ventilation via a supraglottic airway device can be considered in larger children and adults with no risk of raised ICP do not use a flexible LMA containing a metal wire spiral. Eye gels have no metallic components. Tape the pilot balloon of a cuff ETT or LMA outside the coil to avoid image distortion by the metal spring. Regarding monitored sedation, benzodiazepine sedation may be used for healthy but claustrophobic adults. Strong analgesia may be required for patients with severe back pain or root compression pain to tolerate positioning. The role of sedation in MRI scanning in children is unclear. Some centers have reported success with structured sedation programs, for example using Presidex. 
However, the safety of having heavily sedated patients in the MRI scanner without direct anesthetic supervision has been questioned. IPPV through a 10 meter breathing system. Use a system that functions as a T piece so dead space is unaffected by the length. Examples include IRS T piece and Bain system. Both can be used for babies and small children. Airway pressures measured near the ventilator may not accurately represent distal pressures at the ETT. Tidal volume delivered to the lungs will be reduced by compression losses of the gas within the system and by expansion of the tubing during inspiration. This makes it difficult to compensate for significant leaks around uncuffed ETTs. Use a slightly larger ETT to minimize air leaks. As a result of these effects, IPPV using a simple pressure generator such as Penland Nafu 200 with Newton valve may not be effective in children weighing more than 15 kg. Increased expiratory resistance of some long systems such as the RSTPs generates a peep which increases with fresh gas flow. Regarding critically ill patients, MRI scans in ICU patients confer greater risk and therefore requires detailed planning. The risk and benefit balance should be assessed by senior clinicians. Avoid scanning patients who are hemodynamically unstable unless there is substantial impact on the outcome. As the patient may lack capacity, full checks must be performed to confirm there are no hazardous metallic implants or foreign bodies present. Conventional MRI unsafe monitoring equipment such as ICP transducers and temporary pacing wires should be removed and or replaced with MRI safe equipment before the patient enters the scan room. Infusion lines must be long enough to allow pumps to be located at a safe distance from the magnet. Consider using MRI conditional or safe infusion pumps. Cardiac arrest. Start basic life support with a non-metallic self-inflating bag. Rapidly remove the patient from the scan room on a non-magnetic trolley and continue advanced life support outside the 0.5 empty boundary. Do not attempt advanced life support in the scan room and do not allow the cardiac arrest team into the scan room. Thank you.